take control of your finances. Gain insights from top industry professionals. Financial topics that matter to you from your go-to resource. This is Right on the Money with your host, Dennis Matter. Hello and welcome to Right on the Money, the show that features financial advisors, insurance professionals and fiduciaries who discuss financial topics that empower you to take control of your finances. I'm your host, Dennis Mattern, and we are so glad you've taken time out of your day to spend with us. Now, of course, remember, you can watch full episodes on our YouTube channel or rightonthemoneyshow.com. Now, today I am pleased to be joined by the advising team from Carlson Financial Services. I'm going to introduce them here. Roy Carlson, Nathan Barton, and Rob Barton. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. We're going to dive right in because we need to hear the story of how Carlson Financial got its start. Roy, talk to us. So back in 1996, my wife convinced me to go to a job interview with the largest financial planning national firm. Mm -hmm. And I ended up taking a position with them for two reasons. Um, number one, I was an independent contractor, which meant that I wasn't working for a company where I had to sell their inventory. Mm -hmm. And the other is the relationships with, with clients was based on a financial plan as opposed to a sales cycle. Sure. Uh, one of the things that we noticed when my wife joined the practice was that everything we were teaching our clients about financial planning was coming from scripture. And so it was then that we began teaching uh, a stewardship model of biblical uh, financial management. Now you just said something fascinating that, uh, and we're going to introduce the rest of the team here in a second, but your first team member was your spouse. That's right. Now you, you said she was, uh, what was she doing before? She was an auditor and tax accountant with one of the big six firms. And if you ever want to grow your marriage, you just simply need to work with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that brings us, so we, uh, so you, the, you're there, you bring the wife on board, and then uh, Nathan, you join the firm next. Tell me yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah, so when I was uh, 16, I was taking a life purpose planning course uh, in high school. And as part of that course, I had to interview three people about different uh, career paths. Mm -hmm. um, and two weeks pr prior to when I had to do this, uh, my dad had played in a golf tournament with one of his friends whose financial advisor had put on this tournament, which was Roy Carlson. Um, and so my dad said, you should reach out to him and see if he would meet with you. Uh, because it sounded like a really interesting field to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I reached out and about two weeks later we met uh, and I had some prepared questions for him um, and just wanting to know more about the industry. And then uh, in his words, he tried to talk me out of, you know. He, he tried to talk you out of the job? Yes. <laughs> All right, so we follow up question then, Roy. What, what was that about? Well, I wanted to make sure that uh, not only did he have the head knowledge, but he also had the heart to get through it. And so we didn't make it easy. Um, we wanted him to be able to talk about what his stewardship theology was and go through a book by uh, Randy Alcorn called Money, Possessions, and Eternity and identify why he did what he did as a Christian. And not only did he pass, I couldn't let him leave there without having us join him. That would be a great eye-opener at 16, my gosh, to actually have to start thinking above and beyond yourself. Yes. And what a ministry platform for him. Well, so then that brings us then to your brother. So Rob, how did you join the firm? Not long after Nathan had joined, the Lord redirected me away from the accounting career that I had started. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> I found that it was extremely mundane and quite boring once, once I got into it. And I knew that I had a, a desire to build relationships with people and I had a desire to, to work in business and in finance. And so I met with Roy probably six months after my dad said, hey, you should go meet with Roy. Uh, I was slightly stubborn in that respect. But once I met with Roy, I realized that um, one, we were like-minded uh, in our faith. Uh, we both enjoyed the relationship side of business and we both enjoyed the number side as well. So that led me to um, consult with the wife and pray hard and long on if it was something that the Lord was directing me to and it didn't take very long to get peace about making the decision to dedicate my career to helping people align their faith and their finances through financial planning. So Roy, when you met the, uh, the second Barton boy, what, what were you thinking? <laughs> well, I was actually playing golf with his father, Pastor Rob Barton, and he said to me, Roy, you know I got another boy. <laughs> <laughs> and so having such success with Nathan and what a pleasure it was to work with him, I was really looking forward to meeting. There we go. Well, that's the ultimate, that is the ultimate uh, compliment to both of you. Yeah, except for now he's my senior. <laughs> <laughs> well, so one of, the things we, one of the things that we've hit on just a couple times here is how faith, the, the role that faith plays in your practice and in the way you've been led into, into what you're doing now and, and how you're helping people. 
Could you talk a little bit about the difference between stewardship versus ownership? Sure. So from a client perspective, being a steward means being a manager, so the role becomes pleasing the owner. And so that's very freeing for clients. From our perspective, it really means providing a platform so that people can make prayerful decisions consistent with their faith. That has got to be freeing and liberating for people. Absolutely. Now, so with, with that being said, I know that when it comes to financial planning that uh, there are six key areas. Could you walk us through those, Nathan? Yeah, so the six key areas that we focus on are cash flow management, um, investment management, uh, legacy planning, uh, wealth management, tax planning, and retirement planning. Wow, and so you're, uh, you're working all of that, the normal, the, what is normally offered, but then on top of that, you're aligning and helping people uh, put that into practice with their faith. Yeah, so our hope is to address each one of these areas first from a spiritual perspective and then from a mechanical perspective. Well, you know, that brings me to something I read uh, and I wanted to ask Rob about that I saw on the website, and it said, service through the seasons. Walk me through that. Um, well, you can tell that we're all three in different phases of life. Uh, Roy's got a little more gray in the beard and the hair than we do. Uh, and so our goal in meeting with clients is no matter what age they are, that we're walking alongside of them and serving them well during that time of their life, whether they're like Nathan um, and they're fresh out of college and they're trying to build a financial plan and understand what that looks like, um, whether they're like me and they're married and they're trying to make sure they're taking the right steps along the way, or if in Roy's case, they're getting closer to the retirement age, uh, the wealth accumulation phase and moving into retirement, we wanna make sure that we're serving them well no matter what season of life they're in. You know, you've seen with your experience um, and probably heard a million times, gosh, I wish I would have started this sooner. Yes. Or, and and uh, I do know that sometimes, sometimes the, I can't remember the phrase, the, 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 the teacher will appear when the student is ready. And in this case, you've got the, you've got all generations covered as far as somebody to be able to translate that into action maybe. Yeah, I mean the great part is, is that we, we can work with an entire family. Um, the mother and father, the children, the grandchildren, and it becomes a lasting legacy of faith in how they're managing their financial life. What's your end goal when you're working with clients? Well, what we hope to do is provide a platform so that each one of our clients can hear, well done, good, good and faithful steward. Carlson Financial, what services do you all offer? So we offer fee-based asset management, fee-based financial planning, along with insurance services. Okay, so we've got everything covered. We're a full service shop. Um, with that being said, one of the things that I'm really excited about is the workshops uh, that you're hosting and putting on. And Nathan, I believe, uh, I'm gonna ask you this one, Biblical Financial Stewardship Workshops. What's going on? What do we got going? Yeah, so they're demographically targeted workshops um, to help people in their financial lives make decisions that align with their faith. Well, Roy, with the, with the workshops and having them demographically targeted, I, I, think this is, I think it is important. So why do you think it's important? Well, I mean, one of the most frequent things we hear in our practice is, I wish I would have started earlier, or I wish I would have known this earlier on in my marriage. And so our aim is to target different demographics when people are just starting out in life professionally, um, when people are just getting married and, and beginning their professional careers. Although the spiritual questions are a lot the same, the mechanical application and the practical application of that is, is far different. So where these gentlemen can s talk to each other in the first two stages of life, um, then we can work with them as they're getting a little bit mature. So for everybody, it, it must be different questions that you hear and different challenges that you're hearing from the different, uh, different groups you're teaching to. Absolutely. So Rob, I'm gonna direct this question to you then. Um, why is there so much written about wealth in the Bible? There's almost 2,500 verses on money, possessions, and wealth in Scripture. And I think that that's because money competes with the Lord for mastery of our lives. Mm -hmm. I also think because of the world that we live in, um, God's able to teach us life lessons on surrender and sacrifice and how we manage money ultimately and, and manage wealth ultimately affects our fellowship with Him. Yeah, and there's actually, uh, for every one verse about salvation in the Bible, there are three about the handling of money, possessions, and wealth. That's, fa uh, that's fascinating. And, and actually 19 of the 38 parables actually address mm -hmm. uh, money, possessions, and wealth. So Roy, last question I have to ask you is, uh, with the workshop that you're teaching, how do I get there? How do I find out? How do I sign up? What do I do? So you can go to the events tab on the carlsonfinancialservices.com website or you can call our office, either one. 
Well, gentlemen, with that being said, uh, that's our time today. Um, don't forget, you can watch full Right on the Money episodes on our official YouTube channel or at rightonthemoneyshow.com where you can get up-to-date financial news and insights from the top insurance and financial professionals in your area. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.